Now we're going to talk about how to use U substitution to find definite integrals. Um, take a look at this example. One way to do this is to use the result of example three. In example three, we've been through um, a couple of steps to find the more general anti-duality of this square root of two x plus one. And it turned out to be this. So it take about maybe three or four steps, okay? Now, if you have this result already, then this definite integral, say definite integral, the lower and upper limit of this integral are specified. The result for that should be a single number. So to find this integral, we find the general anti-duality of this square root of two x plus one, which you already did, okay? So this is the, this is one anti-duality of this function. And then we evaluate this from the lower limit, zero, to upper limit, four. So we know that x over here go from zero to four. Now you just substitute, substitute four in it, and then substitute zero in this x. And then do the calculation. You get 26 over three. So it looks like very simple, right? However, over here, you have used maybe three or four steps to get this result. So it's actually three or four steps plus another step. So it's actually a little bit long, okay? So another way to do this problem is actually uh, usually more preferable. Um, the way to do this is to change the limit of integration when we do the use of, okay? So how do we do that? So first, uh, we also let u to be 2x plus 1, okay? So that will become square root of u right here. And, and over here, uh, what happened to the dx? Well, du will be equal to 2dx, the derivative of this, times the differential dx. So it will be 2dx. So dx is going to be du divided by 2. So we put this one half here, and then we put du here. Now notice that over here, this is gonna become integra an integration with respect to u. Or originally, this is an integration with respect to x. x go from zero to four. Now this is with respect to u. What does u change from? From which number to which number? So we need to find out. We cannot just put zero to four. That's not for u, okay? So to find out u change from what to what, we use this. u is 2x plus 1. When x equal to 0, the lower limit of x, you substitute 0 into x right here. u will be equal to 1. So that will be the corresponding lower limit for u. So you should enter this lower limit here, 1, for u. Now when x is equal to 4, the upper limit for x right here, substitute 4 in this, u is equal to 9. So that is a corresponding upper limit for u. So we're gonna put it over here. So be sure to change the upper and lower limit for u once you change this integration to be with respect to u, okay? So that is a key step. If you don't change it, that is not correct because that is an integration with respect to u. You have a lower limit u and upper limit u right here. Now, after you've done this, uh, we can find this anti-duality of this square root of u. First, uh, we would write this as u to the one half power and increase exponent by one times the reciprocal of this exponent. Now, and then we know that uh, u is going to change from one to nine. So we put down u change from one to nine. Simplify this, this is one third. Now you can just go ahead and substitute nine into the u and substitute one into the u to evaluate this. And that is 26 over three, okay? So this method here is actually more preferable, um, but be sure to remember to change the upper and lower limit of the integration once you do the u substitution. Example nine. In this definite integral, again, we try use 
So let this complicate here to get single variable. So that will become one over u squared. Now what happened to the dx? dx over here is du over negative phi. So we'll have du here. And then we put this negative one fifth over here. Now this is an integration with respect to u. So we need to find the lower and upper limit of u. So when x is equal to one, u is going to be negative two. When x is equal to two, substitute here, u is going to be negative seven. So the corresponding upper and lower limit over here is negative two to negative seven. Notice that even though this upper limit is smaller than this lower limit, the lower limit for x will correspond to the lower limit for u. Lower limit one here corresponding to this lower limit negative two here for u. Uh, upper limit two for x will corresponding to this upper limit for u over here. Even though this number here is actually smaller than this, um, you keep them this way. So it's important to change the upper and lower limit once you use the u substitution, because this is an integration with respect to u. Now, after you have done this, we will find this untitledity of one over u squared. Okay. First, we will write this as u to the negative second power, and then we increase this exponent by one, and then divide by this exponent. And now we just need to evaluate this from negative two to negative seven. You go from negative two to negative seven. Just go ahead and substitute negative seven in U and negative two in U and you subtract, okay? And that will be the result here. Example 10. In this example, uh, again, we try U sub. Um, we try to let U to be ln of x here because the derivative of what's the derivative of ln of x with respect to x? It is one over x. So one over x occurs here in that integral. So I know this is the right choice for u. So du is one over x times the differential dx. So the ln of x is the u here and one over x dx right here become du. So that will be this. Now you have to find the corresponding lower and upper limit for u by substituting the lower and upper limit for x. Substitute x to be one, u will be zero. Substitute x to be e here, u is ln of e, ln of e is equal to one. So u is gonna go from zero to one. anti delta u is u squared over two, and u change from zero to one. Substituting here, this is one half. Finally, uh, I would like to talk about the symmetry of an integral if the function is even or odd when you integrate that function. So suppose the function is continued from negative a to a. If the function f right here is an even function, so in the graph, you will see that the function will be symmetric with respect to this y-axis. Now, if the upper and lower limit here are also symmetric, it's from negative a to a, then what happened here is the integral from negative a to a will be double this integral from zero to a. So we twice that. Now, what happens if the function f here is an odd function? So to tell the function is odd, then you can check this. If the function f here is an odd function, then the graph will be symmetric with respect to the origin. So this part here and this part here will be symmetric, except they will have opposite sign. So when you integrate this function f from negative a to a, the 
we saw here will cancel here, right? And we'll get zero, okay? So for example, uh, in this integral, this function here is an even function and we integrate from negative to two, okay? It's kind of symmetric right here, by, by a over here, that is equal to twice the integral from zero to two. So we just find this integral from zero to two and then double that. So that will be the result. For number two, this function here is an odd function. And how can you tell it is an odd function? You substitute negative x into x. Okay, we replace x by negative x. Tangent of negative x is negative tangent of x. And then negative x parenthesis square and negative x parenthesis to the four power, okay, would be this and this one. So that's equal to negative f of x. So when f of negative x equal to negative f of x, the function is an odd function. Now, the because the symmetry of this lower and upper limit, then this integral here will be equal to zero. So this is the end of section 5.5. .5.